Hello everyone, Darko2012 here with Global Government News and I'm reading an article titled International Hearings uh, Begin on Falsified Swine Flu Pandemic and this story is written by Steve Watson posted on January 19th, 2010 and uh, it says greatest medical scandal of the century to come under scrutiny and there's, uh, there's actually been some new or recent news about the H1N1 vaccine as far as its health side effects that um, a lot of us, you know, kind of saw coming as far as Gillian Barre with the Washington uh, Redskins cheerleader and there's been other cases of it. Um, but I posted an article about or that covers or documents or reports about uh, pregnant women who had miscarriages. There's 10 of them. Uh, with all their personal stories about how after they took the H1N1 vaccine, they um, had miscarriages, but their doctors will not uh, admit to its correlation. There's also been um, public workers in the public sector that were um, mostly health workers, but uh, they were forced to take the H1N1, otherwise they would lose their job, and so they took it, and now they have, a, you know, they're crying bloody murder, and asking for help as far as uh, all the debilitating effects that uh, they've had to endure from taking the shot. Um, so now the WHO is going to um, hire you know outside agencies to uh, see what went wrong um, in this eugenics operation uh, for population control, for controlling the population. Um, they're going to they're going to regulate themselves, they're going to they're gonna um, they're gonna check themselves basically, but uh, let's get into the story here. It's not a big story. The Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, a 47-nation body encompassing democratically elected members of Parliament, has begun hearings to investigate whether the H1N1 swine flu pandemic was falsified or exaggerated in an attempt to profit from the vaccine sales. A PACE resolution passed last month. Last month gave context to the hearings which begun yesterday in Strasbourg. In order to promote their patented drugs and vaccines against flu, uh, pharmaceutical companies influenced scientists and official agencies responsible for public health standards to alarm governments worldwide and make them squander tight health resources for inefficient vaccine strategies and needlessly expose millions of healthy people to the risk of an unknown amount of side effects of insufficiently tested vaccines. The quote bird flu campaign of 2005-2006 combined with the quote swine flu campaign seemed to have caused a great deal of damage not only to some vaccinated pa patients and to public health budgets but to the credibility and accountability of an important international health agencies. Talking about the CDC and who that um, promoted it, uh, promoted vaccinations and uh, were responsible for the campaigns. Um, heading, heading the hearings will be the chairman of the health committee of PACE, Dr. Wolfgang Woodgard, a former German lawmaker, a medical doctor and epidemiologist. Uh, Woodward has referred to the swine flu pandemic as one of the greatest medical scandals of the century. Uh, I remember uh, he was a good source for me when I was passing out flyers uh, in the community here where I live as far as the ingredients that were in the vaccine and he was one of those few people that were well not really few people but he was one of the few sources that were coming out saying what was really in it and uh, according to him he said that all the evidence points towards these uh, cells animal cells uh, being used to make the vaccine it was being cancerous so he definitely is a good person that you'd want to have um, heading the hearings uh, Woodgard charges the WHO uh, altered the definition of a pandemic from an outbreak in several con continents at once with an above average death rate uh, to one where the spread of the disease is constant. And that's kind of important because, you know, when you think of pandemic, you think of it being, you know, a lot of people are really bad. But this is just saying the definition, the current definition is what they used uh, to raise the pandemic level to six, which is the highest this fall in 2009 um, for the H1N1 uh, flu pandemic, you know, their definition is you, you know, as long as it's, you know, some kind of sustained uh, infection rate, 
in a number of different continents and different places. So it's not the amount, it's just spread out. And uh, so it's kind of easier to do that. And it especially helps when you're trying to roll out vaccines for the pharmaceutical companies uh, and create fear and panic in the public. The parliamentary uh, inquiry will determine if a falsified pandemic was declared by, by WHO or the World Health Organization in June 2009 on the advice of medical advisors, many of whom have close ties to the very phar pharmaceutical giants Glaxo, SmithKline, Roche, Novartis uh, that produced the H1 vaccines. It will also look into the controversy surrounding the fact that the two shots were initially advised when it was later revealed that one dose was entirely suitable. Far oh yeah, and that's, that's a good point because uh, they were saying that the two shots were going to be needed and they kept, they kept saying that to everybody, especially with children, they're going to need two shots. And so that's actually the reason, that's the ex I'm sorry, that's the excuse that the CDC and the WHO are using to, uh, you know, as far as all these extra doses of H1, unused H1N1 vaccine. They're not saying it's because, or they're not admitting it's because um, the majority of people that were expected to take the vaccine didn't. They refused to take it. So that's why they have these leftover vaccines, but they're saying, oh, it's because we had anticipated two shots, you know. Uh, that's why we had, and we don't, people only needed one. That's why we have the leftovers. Um, so they like to twist and, and twist, uh, you know, the facts, you know, after the fact. They like to twist them in their little media articles, usually in Reuters. It's pretty common. Pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies are thought to have made a profit somewhere in the region of 7.5 to 10 billion on the H1N1 vaccines. The worldwide death toll from H1N1 is thought to be around 13,500, just over a third of the number who die from regular flu every year in the U.S. alone. Pace has noted that the alleged conspiracies could have exposed millions of healthy people to the risk of side effects uh, of insufficiently tested vaccines. Sorry. Many countries have begun offloading huge stockpiles of unused vaccines and canceling outstanding orders. The latest to do so is Greece, where the government has announced that they would make the H1N1 vaccine mandatory. And so, yeah, I, I've also I've, I've uh, uploaded an article that uh, documents uh, the different vaccines that uh, are unused that are going to these third world countries, third world nations. Uh, it's titled, you know, uh, unused H1N1 vaccines going to third world nation test subjects. And it shows where all these vaccines are going. Um, uh, it says PACE will also hold a debate next week titled Fake Pandemics, a Threat to Health to be attended by representatives of the World Health Organization and the European pharmaceutical industry. Unlike the European Parliament, it has no decision-making powers but as was demonstrated by its report into extraordinary rendition, it does have the power to make life uncomfortable for the powers that be, most of the Irish Times. So there you go. It's a pretty good article. And uh, I'll post these links, uh, a couple links down here for the stockpiles of unused vaccines and uh, well, you know how they're trying to dump them onto these other countries. Yeah. Uh, telling them that they need to take it and that the H1N1 is uh, still a 